Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about the overheads and the room mics. If you haven't checked out the last videos where we are going over the kick drum and snare drum, make sure to check that out. Now I've taken off all the processing of the overheads as well as the rooms. So here's the overheads in solo. And here's the mono room in solo. Here's the near room mic in solo. And finally the far mic. Okay, so we will start with the overheads. And the first part is EQ. So what I'm gonna do first is can just roll up some of that low end just to get some of that kick out of the overheads. Just to kind of tighten up a little bit so we don't have too much of the kick in the overheads. So what I'm going to do now is to kind of tame the high end on the cymbals so we don't get so harsh sounding cymbals in the mix later on. A good spot to do this is with a part where there's a lot of crashes. Okay, so what we did now was to take out and tighten that low end on the overheads and we kind of tamed the high end of the uh, cymbals and I checked if there was any ringtone that was uh, annoying. So next up we are using the VCC channel and I'm probably going to use the Brit N setting to give some meat to the overheads. So what the Brit N setting did was to give a little bit more weight to the snare itself within the overheads. So what I did was to crank the drive by maximum as well as the input. And this to kind of give some nice coloration. Finally we're using some light compression so we're doing it in parallel mode. So the goal here was just to kind of give the cymbals a little bit more consistency in volume. Since these are already sample cymbals, they are pretty straightforward and consistent in the sound. So that's why I basically used it in parallel mode, because I just want to give that extra, extra. So here is the cymbals with the rest of the kit. So next up is the room mics and what we will begin with is to first add compression to make them sound a little bit bigger. So this was the mono room and I used Kramer Pi for this one and I did a decay time of 1, the limit mode, 6.5 on the output and minus 14 on the threshold. So next up is the near room 
And here I'm going to use the UBK one from Kush Audio. And here as well, I just want to make the uh, room sound a little bit bigger and kind of squash it a little bit. Okay, so now we have the mono room set as well as the near room. So next up is the far room. I'm going to use a transient designer here and I'm using the DF trans and I, what I will do is to give some more sustain to make to lengthen the room. We're still on the far room and next up is EQ. Since we're using a lot of compression on the rooms, I don't want to have a lot of symbols because it can get very easily when compressing really hard. What I will do is to use the EQ to kind of tame that. As well, I took out some of that ringy tone in the low mids from the snare. As you notice, I didn't do a just a ordinary high pass. That's because I don't want to cut out all of the high end. I still want to save the meat of the of the cymbals too, so so they can feel a little bit bigger and fatter in the mix. So what I will do is to just copy and paste the EQ on the near room. And yes, I will keep it at the same setting. And I will do the same on the mono room. So next up is this room stereo bus. And I will use a little bit of compression. So that is enough, it adds a nice amount of life to the drums. So here is the rooms in solo with before and after. What you can do here on the room bus is to add a compress a EQ to kind of just tighten up the low end just a little bit. Let's hear that with the rest of the drums. The rooms are a little bit too loud. We're just gonna lower it and drag it back in again. So 
So here is the current drums in context with the full mix. Thank you for watching. If you haven't checked out the previous videos where we are going over the kick drum and snare drum, check that out. And stay tuned for the next video where we are going over the parallel compression as well as the bus processing.